Book One, From Then to Now, Part 22. Where have you been while I've been here chewing most of the time? He said as I began to laugh, even though it hurt to do so. I've been busy doing all sorts of funny things. Actually, I can't even believe what I have been through. When was the last time I saw you, anyhow? I asked as he looked at me with those big horsey eyes. I figure it's been about a year, he said as he let out one of those hoarse laughs that you sometimes hear these animals do. I had to laugh with him because he was a jokester. Okay, do you want to go down by the ocean and run on the beach? I asked. That would be nice. Can we go right now? He asked. I grabbed his reins and said, Let's go, horsey. He seemed to be all excited as I walked him down the bluff to the sand. It was a clear morning with a soft warm breeze from off of the land. This was a great place to be. I went over with him all the things Shis had said. I knew that I had to write them down before the day got going, or I would forget so much of it. I let my horse run for a bit, and then I rode him back up the bluff and to the house again. I put him with the new horses that Rosa and Sonia rode in on. Have you introduced yourself to your new horsey friends yet? I asked him. They are both girls, and I'm a little shy, said my horse. I couldn't help but laugh out loud, because after all that we had been through, I finally discover that my horse is shy. I walked back over to the house, and as I got near the front door, I could tell that everyone was up. So I walked in and said hello. Bionus Diaz, Goldie, said Paul, as he was just getting up. Mary was already fixing something for everybody. Come and sit, Goldie. I am fixing something for you, said Mary. Rosa soon came out and sat with us. Hello, Goldie. Good to see you, she said. Hello, Rosa. How is Sonia? I asked. She is very sick. It will be quite a while before she can go back to her school, said Mary. I wanted to hear what Rosa had to say about the situation as it is. Let's talk about someone to take her place at the school, I said. 
I told Rosa last night, Goldie, about you teaching the school. Rosa knows some of the people that help run the school, and she said she would introduce you to them, said Mary. That would be great. When do you think we could go, Rosa? I asked. We could leave tomorrow, if you like. I wanted to stay for another day with Sonia, and then I have to get back to my job at the store. We can ride into town together and talk with Mr. and Mrs. Hastings, who are in charge of all the affairs of the school. They are very nice, and they may consider you, because they really do not have anyone who will teach. The money they pay is very small, and so most people will not do the job. You can also live at the schoolhouse. There is a nice room there that has everything. Even though they do not pay much, they do provide meals that are donated from a local cafe, and you can get certain free supplies from the general store where I work. There are also people in the community that donate to the person teaching the school. They know the pay is very small. Sonia wants to start her career at this first little school, and then work her way up into a university some day, because she loves teaching," said Rosa. This is great. I'm not too concerned about the money. I want the experience so that I can share what I know with others. Do they have books there as references so that I know what to teach? I asked. Oh yes, they have lots of books, a whole library full of them, and if you need more, there are many people in the town who have books they will donate. Sonia was able to get books on any subject she wanted, and there are so many people that helped her, she said. This all sounds really good. I said, as I was getting excited about the whole idea. I sat and thought about what it would be like teaching, and how I would go about it, as the three of them talked. As usual, I was in my own world, considering what was to come next in my life. I had an idea of what to do, and I knew that it would work out. I knew that I couldn't just come out and tell about what I am experiencing all the time, I had to be more creative in my approach. After presenting some of the simple truths that I have learned, 
and seeing the reaction that people have, I knew I had to tone down my presentation. I wrote most of the day while the women stayed around the house for Sonia. Paul came in and out while he was doing his duties around the house outside. I wanted to write down what I had realised from my experiences with Shis. After I put down what I remembered, I made a general outline of what I would teach and what my approach would be to the children. I knew children were more flexible than the adults, and they may have some experiences they would like to share. I would have to wait and see if I even got the job. It was soon evening, and all of us sat together, except for Sonia. She was not able to get up. We had fish, which the cat loved, for dinner, and listened to some of Rosa's stories about her life in the big town, which she called the city. After dinner, I went outside and sat in the hammock to let my dinner settle. Rosa came out and sat beside me in a chair. Goldie, why is it that you want to teach? she asked. I want to share the knowledge I have experienced and come to know with others, I said. You are not talking about what my parents are trying to tell me about my dreams, are you? she said, looking at me for the answer. What your parents know is unique, and very few will understand what takes place within themselves. But you are right. What I want to teach about is the reality that takes place within each of us, I said. You know that almost no one accepts the imaginings of the mind to be anything but silly stuff, especially those who are religious. Everything to them, besides their own doctrine, is devil-worshipping. I have met some really strange religious people who are so convinced about their written material that they would gladly get rid of any opposition to their beliefs. I am not at all religious. For me it's very easy to see right through the fallacy of today's religions, because I made a real study of them when Mum and Dad were involved. I even pointed out things that they never thought of, and finally they left their religion. Most people who follow a belief usually do not investigate the real history of those beliefs. They only accept what they are told on a social level to be accepted as a person 
of their community. Religion is sometimes just a social status, where people want to belong. I like the idea of the individual identity with their reality, as my parents call it. That's the way I see things in my life. Each one of us has our own ideas about living, and that's what I do," she said. "You are very wise, Rosa," I said. "I like hearing what you have to say about your life." She smiled and said. At some point in my life, my parents started telling me about their dreams and the people they were meeting in them. Well, I was not interested. There was something within me that could not identify with what they were telling me," she said. When you are ready, you will know all you have to, and then it will all be clear to you," I said in a kind voice. Rosa then said good night and went inside. I could tell that she was very determined. To be how she is, which was more than fine with me. For me, it was another great night to be out amongst the stars and the night air. I was now experiencing what I could see coming. And that is people already making up their minds without any real experience through their own investigating. In a way, it is all rather humorous. All of us have the real connection to life. But we tend to block it by deciding something different. It is plain to see that the educational systems do not teach anything about the true reality, but only an outer relationship with our temporary physical life. No wonder most people are so confused, stubborn, diseased, and have a fear of death when they are ready to leave here. I would like to teach about how everything we are all experiencing. Relates to everything we do. If a person has just the outer knowledge that relates to this world only, then where are they when the time comes to pass on from here? It would seem to make sense. That a person would want to be prepared for the real journey, as though they knew they were going to take a trip some day. Aside from the basic educational institutions, there are the religions that are supposed to handle. The mysteries of life beyond the grave and death, but from what I have learned, they do not teach a person to properly be prepared for anything but morbidness.
That night, I went and met with Rebazar, and he again explained the different levels of life to me, and how they relate. He said that the first two heavens were where most believers would go after this life, and then they would again some day return in a new body with a new mind to once again try and figure out the true reality of life. He said it is best to gain the real guidance while you are still on earth, so that you can free yourself from ever coming back here. The higher levels are so much better than here, and they are so much more refined. I spent most of the night with him, going over so many things, and then returned to my body. The next day came fast, and boy, was it hard getting up again. I did get up after the rooster seemed to scream his regular routine, and then I went inside to see everyone. Good morning, everyone. Rosa and I are going into town today to see if I will be the new teacher, I said as I sat down. Only after you have eaten your rice and beans, Goldie, said Mary as she laughed with everyone. We will miss you, Goldie said Paul. I will come to visit from time to time, because I like it here. I am also hoping that my parents will come and visit you very soon, I said. After we finished, Rosa and I got the horses and said our goodbyes, and rode off to the town. Rosa and I rode up the coast by the ocean. It was another clear and sunny day. There were lots of palm trees and seagulls all over the place. Out by the waves, there were pelicans skimming over the surface of the water along the waves as they would form. We saw many Mexican families who had built little places along the way. I liked to see how each family created their own lifestyle. I love how the Mexicans live. They have very little, but they are always happy at whatever they do. Their lives are totally simple and direct with nature. The Mexican families were sometimes far and few between, and we would wave to them as we rode by. After a couple of hours in the saddle, Rosa wanted to stop and rest for a while. We were still along the coast, so we sat on a bluff overlooking the water. We ate some bread and fish 
that Mary had prepared for us. Thank you.